trustees meeting of February 5th. We have a number of folks here. Uh, would citizens at large please introduce themselves? I'm Fred Stockwell, I live in Miami Township. I'm Kathy Stockwell, I live in Miami Township. Jennifer Adams, Miami Township. Eric Johnson, Yellow Springs. Well, they can't come on Springs. Gina Gunderfine, Yellow Springs. Uh, Kim McCarthy, I work in Yellow Springs. Alex and Blue, you live in Yellow Springs. Thank you. We've had a couple special meetings, but first I'd entertain a motion to adopt minutes of January 15. So moved. Second. Any discussion and corrections? I did receive several corrections which have been incorporated. So. Uh, did that include? Some missing names, except. Uh, in the fire report, there was a, a letter missing at the end of a word. I forget what the word was. I see it right here as you say that. Uh, Gun. A typo that I missed. And then we had two with very short. We need to go on that one. Good idea. It's been moved in. Oh, sorry, we need a motion. It's been moved and seconded. We have a vote. Moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of January 15th, 2024, as corrected. Uh, Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. And we had a special meeting on January 29th. I'll, I'll read the minutes. Uh, the meeting was called to order at 11.05 a.m. by Chairperson Hollister. Trustees Hollister and Mutcher were present. Uh, a motion by Chris Mutcher and seconded by Don Hollister was made to adopt Resolution 2024-10, which authorizes intervention uh, in the Kingwood case before the Supreme Court. Motion carried unanimously. There being no further business to discuss, trustees unanimously, unanimously agreed to adjourn at 11.09 a.m. I would entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. I'll second. You were out of town. Of course. Then uh, we can second it to adopt the minutes of the special meeting of January 29th, 2024. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. So, motion approved. And I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes, uh, which I will read, uh, from the February 1st meeting. The meeting was called to order at 1.33 p.m. to discuss matters of fire department payroll. Fiscal Officer Sullivan proposed to begin paying fire department employees from Fund 2281. That's actually a longer number, but we recognize it as 2281, until the first half of the fire levy funds are available from the county auditor's office. The trustees unanimously agreed to the proposal. The trustees also authorized that the fiscal officer authorized the fiscal officer to pay the newly elected fiscal officer $20 per hour for training sessions. There being no further business to discuss, the trustees unanimously agreed to adjourn at 1.50 p.m. I would entertain a motion to adopt these minutes. Move that we adopt them. Second. Any corrections? Do we have a... Moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the special meeting held February 1st, 2024. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion to approve. I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $44,783.99. The general fund 
$6,594.48 from the fire fund, $26,086.76 from the EMS fund, $3,465.45 from the cemetery fund, $2,997.46 from road and bridge, $5,639.84. So moved. A second. Any discussion? No. No. Please call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of $44,783.99 as enumerated. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. <coughs> Uh, the correspondence listed on the agenda that we passed out is from the previous month uh, meeting. Uh, were there items in the correspondence on the table that uh, you thought had particular merit and would become part of our business tonight? Not having memorized them, I'd have to go through them. I can't listen. Um, well, would you allow me to make that, or should I pass them back? Did you just get a copy of the agenda? Yes. Oh, okay. But as, a, okay. as Don mentioned, the correspondence is from another meeting. I would make note of Brett Stockwell's letter about zoning solar panels and leases. And that uh, there'll be a project survey for the transportation improvement program. <clears throat> if we have anything we want to add, that's from Miami Valley Regional Planning. Can I see them, please? Thank you. And this needs to be done, maybe. I don't know what that is, but it looks official. Uh, the SOCA benefit plan, I don't see that as something we need to vote on. We need to fill it out. I really thought you'd pass it along to Mark as opposed to bring it to the meeting, so I'm, okay. I apologize for that. While we're catching up on the correspondence, are there any items the public want to add to the agenda? later in the meeting or to comment on right now? I have one additional thing. Yep. Somewhere in the paper trail, there was a message from our Green County engineer requesting the certification of something that we needed to certify by. Got it. Oh, you have it? Yeah. Okay. That, I can see. The roads, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to confirm that we have 14.487 miles. Okay. Put that under old business. Or new business, rather. Can ignore the phone. Anything else? Um, on the agenda? Anything oh, no, from, from the correspondence that you want to add? Said, no, I said. We move on to the fire department report. Sure. Uh, so during the last three weeks, we've had 30 EMS calls, um, 20 fire calls. Um, some of those were just due to the crappy road conditions and that we had over the last few weeks. Uh, mutual aid request, uh, we requested one medic for EMS, two fire, and then we received two EMS and one, or I'm sorry, I, I said that incorrectly. We requested mutual aid medic once and two for fire calls. We received two EMS and then one for fire. Um, a lot of stuff going on with uh, dispatch uh, and Green County Central Communications. 
Uh, Mindy Lane, uh, who was the coordinator for our dispatch center, resigned. Um, she put her two weeks notice in and then the fire chiefs were notified a week later. Um, so her last day was actually last Friday. Um, and then I sent you some email information on, on that as well. Um, <clears throat> so the um, Public Safety Information Sharing Network, uh, we were talking a little bit, I gave you a little heads up a, a couple of months ago that they were determining whether or not they were going to keep the servers in Green County Central Communications in the Justice Center. They found that that was not feasible, uh, didn't make financial sense to move those. Uh, now we're going back to having all of our dispatch data, everything in that network actually hosted on Amazon Web Services um, as the company that provides the software for, for that system wants to head that direction and the, the, the board has decided that was the best route to go. So we have a meeting uh, coming up this week uh, regarding some of that and uh, from that point what we'll be looking at doing is <clears throat> all of the departments which includes us who do not have access to that system um, for various reasons is we will um, be making some changes with our network infrastructure and in order to do that we have to get specific cloud virtual private networking hardware, i.e. a firewall uh, that will connect that directly with Amazon Web Services. The price is $8,000 roughly, a little on the high side, however they're guaranteeing them for life. So there's two different firewalls so that there's uh, uh, dual connectivity and then any, any issue that ever happens with those firewalls, Amazon has to replace them at their expense, not ours. Um, so I don't have a date on when that's going to happen, but I might have a better idea after this, this meeting later on this week. Um, I sent you guys the, uh, the patient satisfaction survey um, for MediCount. I just need formal board approval so that I can implement that because um, it's, it's an amendment to our contract mm -hmm. that we have with MediCount. I would make that motion. Second. Uh, I actually missed that email. You said email? Yep. Anything substantive in it? But <clears throat> so it's, and what it will do is every patient will get um, a survey from MediCount. Mm -hmm. um, monthly they will compile that data and then provide that back to me so that I can, you know, do whatever needs to be done based on that data. <clears throat> It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, signing the survey agreement with MediCount. Could we have a roll call? Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. Uh, truck repairs. <clears throat> so we've got a, a number of different things that are up for repair on the trucks. That includes the tanker, engine 81, engine 82, and the brush truck. Uh, so not including the brush truck parts for those total $3,371. That's going to include to replace a number of gauges um, as well as primer and a fitting on the tanker. Um, similar stuff, uh, discharge gauges and whatnot. Basically what happens is they lose all their fluid inside that keeps the gauge stable so you can actually read a pressure. Um, the gauges actually work, but you, it just bounces up and down so you can't see them. The only way to fix that is to replace them. Uh, we've got a cross lay valve on an engine that does need to be rebuilt. Uh, engine 81 will also get a pretty extensive vacuum test. We know that it's got some leaks in it and there's just no other way to track them down. Um, engine 82 is basically in the same boat. Um, <clears throat> what I anticipate is that we'll probably find Excuse me, we'll probably find some valves on those tankers that need to be rebuilt, and that's just a byproduct of our hard water. Um, and, and they're old enough likewise. Typically one of those valves you usually get maybe five years out of them before they have to be rebuilt. Um, so that's the direction we're headed with that. So the ETA on those repair, or I'm sorry, the, the estimate on those does not include labor. 
Um, they're supposed to get me some estimates on that, but it's kind of hard to, to decide exactly how many hours it's going to take to do those repairs since it's such an individual thing for each truck. Um, I mentioned that we have a public safety information sharing network meeting. Uh, of course, after that meeting, I'll come back and report to you guys anything that, that applies. Uh, we received a $13,000 workers' compensation grant. Um, this is specifically designed for cancer prevention for us. So we will be purchasing a gear dryer. Um, you know, we have a gear washer, but at the time that that was purchased, we didn't have the funding and all to be able to purchase a dryer but we definitely need one. It takes about 36 to 48 hours for our gear to dry if it's not in a dryer. <clears throat> Plus we have, the dryer is more of almost like a tumble dryer as opposed to having a heat source because that's actually very damaging to our gear. And then uh, based on studies, uh, other stuff would be to replace a lot of our gloves, give us an or options for having additional gloves uh, in storage as well as the hoods that we wear to protect our, our head and face. Um, this was a big project for Cassidy, um, so give him, give him uh, credit for doing all the behind the scenes work on that and then he'll follow up with the audits that we need to do. Um, so of the $13,000 our cost is grand, so it's a pretty good deal. Um, we do have a couple of other grants that are pending, which primarily are for cot replacement. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, those are in process now. Um, I did... Um, those hydraulic cots have only a sh relatively short shelf life? Uh, we're having a lot of maintenance issues with them, particularly with charging. <clears throat> so when you roll the cot into the Medic, you slide it over to the left and it has a, a, a series of four or five electrical contacts for battery charging. Mm -hmm. They are a maintenance nightmare. So we're actually looking at completely switching brands where most of my guys have a lot more experience with a Stryker brand cot and don't have the maintenance issues that we're having. But we're talking about these are roughly $60,000 a day. So getting covered by grant money would be great. Um, so we'll see where that goes. It's we have a pretty good, pretty good likelihood of success on that. Though. Really? Yeah. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah, it's also a workers' comp grant, so that's that's very helpful for that. Uh, let's see, employee satisfaction survey. So I've distributed uh, employee satisfaction surveys to all members of the department, and I've gotten a few of those back um, so far, and they've got a deadline of February 9th to. Uh, to get those back to me, you guys will get a report on on that. With please that. explain how they're blind. Um, so the way the way that they're blinded is the the person gets that in a word document. They can go through, do whatever they want to do to that document, and then print it out. That way, there's no handwriting that could be you know looked at and figured out. So, although probably half of us don't know each other's handwriting because we type everything. Yeah. So that was the intent of trying to keep it as anonymous as, so, as possible. But then, but then it comes to you instead of to the board. That's the blind part I don't understand. It comes back to their supervisor instead of... Well, you're their supervisor too. Yeah, that's why I thought... I thought it made sense to me that the board would get it directly instead of... Well, you, you will... You, yeah, you will get it. I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, the only other thing I have is um, I spoke with Frank Clay from the consultants and Steve a couple of times last week and then Frank will be, uh, has assured me that we will have the draft by the end of the month. Um, that's really the latest I have. Uh, you talk about fire assessment by the end of the month? Yeah. A draft. So. Okay. Uh, Before we. That's a segue into another topic, but before we go there, uh, normally we don't talk a whole lot about uh, trucks and equipment in your report. Uh, I just wanted to add to this what you've explained recently about testing the equipment. Mm -hmm. Could you real briefly? Sure. So, each apparatus 
has a specific period of time or interval rather of when they're tested. Ambulances, it's both of them every day. Um, so that includes entire equipment inventory as well as things like fluid levels and, and that kind of thing. The engines are checked uh, every other day. Um, and and the fire engines? Yeah. And that's done on a, on a rotational thing, so it's every every other day. Um, and that's mostly because they they have less call volume. Um, brush truck is checked once a week, you know, so those, they're based on a schedule. And then one of the things that we have talked about and are in process of implementing is a more detailed actual check. Uh, and the way that is also designed is it has better improved accountability for who does the check. Uh, it also makes it a lot easier for them to do things in, more in collaboration with each other so it will help them to check the trucks off more efficiently. Um, and, and the apparatus checks, honestly, they are very tedious. So this has a much better way of having a, a more formal step-by-step -step process that they actually have. They can literally pull it up on their phone and go through and, and do that. So that's pretty, that'll, uh, you know, we've got about three quarters of the trucks done. Uh, the next thing that we phase that we go to is how the, is, is the inventory. Um, so in particular our expendables like on the ambulances. Uh, and that interface is, and integrates with the patient care records. So we know, okay, if I use an oxygen supply mask for patient XYZ, where do we get that from? Did it come out of EMS inventory? Did we get it from the hospital? So it's much better at how we actually can track our inventory. Because right now, tracking our inventory is just cumbersome. And this, this will have actually help. And it does have the capability of actually automatically then even doing the order with one of our vendors that we utilize for supplies. Um, so. <clears throat> I don't want to take meeting time to do this, but um, Chris had told me, because I was, I was inquiring about what are, what are the, how do, I like to think like how, what are the procedures that happen every day when somebody comes in at 7 a.m. shift? How do they, how do they know what to do? How do they know when they have to do it by? And he made the, he made the comment that um, you, they electronically um, check they, as, as soon as they complete something. Right. And he, he, he <coughs> explained to me that anybody could check those. They're available for anybody to check at any time. And that, I don't know that that's true or even, or even um, if that's desirable. But is that, it, can we get together sometime? Mm -hmm. um, you can explain to me. Yeah. Um, how about we hold off until this new system is fully implemented and I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm, not, I'm not at a point that showing it to you right now would be Well, let's very talk. Helpful. I'd love to see what we're doing now. And then with the oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. But, I mean, not this week. <laughs> well, then one last item. You explained that uh, the pending consultant report uh, will be available the end of February, uh, and your uh, six months uh, service as the agreement we have uh, with you as interim chief uh, expires February. in a little less than a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've talked of the consultant's report being a key in contracting with you. Right. Uh, so let's have a discussion of the topic extension of interim chief. Well, in our uh, executive committee meeting last time, I think we vaguely um, decided, we didn't vote, but we decided the suggestion of three in, months. In, What's that? You can't vote in executive session. Right, we didn't come back out and vote. Yeah, we didn't come back out and vote. We did not. Three months. I had advocated for six months because if we're just going to get the draft at the end of February, and then then we have to analyze what what it says and what that means to us. Mm -hmm. I think three months is too short. But I'm just one person. I would advocate for six months. Well, I'm okay with either. I'll entertain a motion. 
I make a motion that we extend Denny's his chief, interim Chief Powell's interim contract for six months. A second. Any further discussion? Not I. No, at this point. That's all I got. <clears throat> uh, well, then let's let entertain a motion. Uh, a roll call on the motion to uh, offer another six-month contract. It's, it's been moved and seconded to uh, extend interim chief Powell's contract for an additional six months. Uh, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. And I just want to say, I like what you're doing. Thank you, I appreciate it. <clears throat> Cemetery and road reports. Well, you are acting. The acting sextant and acting kind of road administrator, I guess. Um, cemetery, we had two burials in Clifton during the last period. Um, both of them were. One was a little more challenging than the other. Both of them were conducted in combination of rain and freezing rain, always everybody's favorite. Uh, the first one was right at the very end of the snow that we had that then turned into kind of ice with the rain that we had at exactly the same time that we needed to dig the grave. It just happened to be in a position in Clifton where it was on a slope. <laughs> and it was in a, an area where there were multiple graves you know, here, there, and everywhere, which made it problematic to get in, get equipment in, even if, you know, the weather was fine. So, somehow, he got it done, no problem. That's great. Um, yeah, and didn't tear up either equipment or the ground too terribly, terribly bad. Nice. So, uh, 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 applause to him for that. That must have been I didn't go out there, but that must have been out. Fun time. Just like, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. That's what I kept thinking. And Dan, anyway, and Dan is returning to work for, uh, at light duty? Uh, at some point, yeah. uh, he will need a uh, doctor's write-off, a uh, check-off on that. Uh, I believe he visits his position mid-month mid and may potentially be authorized that. I don't know. Well, thanks for taking over oh, so those duties. Piece of cake now. <laughs> I just... Let's pick up the phone and say do it. Um, roads, I uh, toured all the roads yesterday. Uh, by and large, things look good. Uh, typical small potholes uh, uh, popping up here and there, specifically on North and South River Roads. I don't know why potholes like the name North or South River Road, but that's where, that's where the only ones that we could find are. And Brandon will be addressing, he's fixed about half of them and he's going to address them this the remainder of them this week um, other than that i think i don't know if we were back when we got our latest piece of destroyed equipment repaired and back in service uh, the big truck it, it is back in, in, right? yeah it is back in service and it is functioning as it's supposed to all the hydraulics work as they're supposed to and Tell me that wasn't the new dump truck. It was the old, the it old was. dump truck. Which I thought we sold the old dump truck. We sold the real old one. <laughs> sort of old. Okay. And that's that's about it for temporary road administrator recording. Remind me, how many months has Dan been off? Since mid December. Earlier than Thanksgiving, somewhere in that neighborhood. A little while. Well, boy, for him to be able to come back that quickly is. Well, it's going to be light duty. He's not going to be able to yeah. do much. But he, I saw him the day before yesterday, and he could move his shoulder up to this level. And Brandon saw him today, and he said he could put his hand on top of his head. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. talking about shoulder surgery, that's that's a pretty that's good, a pretty good. Yeah, that's excellent. Recoup. We have fiscal officers. Um, 
It's actually resolution 2024-11, not 10. And I do not have in front of me that, let me see. That resolution. You said 11? Here it is. Yes, I got it. <coughs> um, resolution 2024-11, amendment of temporary appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. EMS billing. Uh, on the first line, I'll read the whole 2281-230-150. Compensation of boards and commissions increased by... 4,000. Uh, electricity increased by 2,500. Water and sewer increased by 1,500. Natural gas increased by 1,500. I would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. As a move. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Um, what was the board count, 4,000 board compensation? Compensation of boards and commissions increased by 4,000. Hmm. Those are volunteers. I mean, that's that line. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess I could throw one little piece of discussion in here, and this is, I guess, more for any future, future fiscal <coughs> officers that might be taking up <coughs> in the spring. Uh, <laughs> Appropriation changes within a fund are not do not require a resolution. They can just be done. It's only between funds that you need. Uh, however, there is transparency here, and we do have a motion. It's been yeah. oh, absolutely. And I'd like to revisit that four thousand dollars more for the volunteer commissions. Uh, all I know is that's the line item that that is used for that. Even volunteers are getting paid raises these days. That's I think so. well, I'll ask Mark with the budget. Did you submit a four thousand dollar volunteer? He's not talking just about board members, oh. but volunteer for raises. You mean volunteer no, firefighters? For, oh, for firefighters. Compensation. Yeah, okay. she was. Uh, she was out of Got it. out of money from what would have been the fire fund. Got Nor it. Normally, the volunteer compensation does come out of out of. Um, out of the fire fund and not EMS billing, but because of that fund status. I know, but it's this line that we're talking about. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yep. Yeah, so she, so she, that line did not have any money appropriated for it. Right. Since we never used that. Right. I, understand. No, I understand. Thank you. It's just I didn't think we had that many volunteer runs to get the $4,000 over a period of three months. Um, I suggested to her that she do that based on what we just did for for last month and what would we do for next month oh and she may have just wrapped it up oh i see so, okay yeah. i gotcha so it's been moved and seconded it's been discussion any more discussion i would like a roll call it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-11 amendment of temporary appropriations as enumerated Ms. moyer yes mr moocher Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Resolution is adopted. So we are looking at new business? Or zoning inspector's report. Excuse me, zoning inspector's report. I'm oh. looking at the phone. Okay. <laughs> I was well, looking at a whole lot. Um, at the last zoning commission meeting, which was my first meeting, um, they talked about um, Solar and um, specifically wanting to for me to bring in some language on residential solar. I think they're going to look at um, commercial solar later. Um, they also talked about um, accessory dwelling units very briefly. I had mentioned to Brian Corey that Deandra Naparol from Regional Planning had brought it up to zoning inspectors several years ago, and with the fact that they're talking about 
maintaining the agricultural focus, but maybe finding some sort of revenue streams for farmers, other than the industrial solar. Um, accessory dwelling units might be a way to go. So I've sent uh, an email to Deandra to ask her to provide some information to Brian Corey, because he also was curious if she had any statistical data on whether um, ABUs actually prevent um, landowners from creating lot splits and carving off lots to make revenue. Um, so there's that. And then um, I don't think their temporary use has not really been talked about yet, but I know that it's not, you don't have any language in front of you yet. Yeah. So I went back. I went back through the minutes of the last several months and there's a lot of talk and Richard Zopf had said he was going to draw up some language. Um, I guess I'll take the December minutes as, no, um, the November minutes is the last word they have on that. That is, you're um, referring to the zoning commission minutes. The zoning commission minutes, so, yeah. Um, well, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of research on temporary uses of other townships in Ohio, well, specifically in Green County. Um, so I, but I don't know. They, they, from what I'm reading from that last seven minutes, they seem like they already have it finished. That's what I understood. I mean, um, just from their discussion. Yeah. They were just but I'm not, I'm not Cross the T's and dot the I's and send it, send it along. Oh, yes. Um, well, they, they, had, they had said that they were going on the April that had the language pretty well thought out in the April minutes, so I read that. But then when I went back and I went, what's going ahead, and got to November, it was much different. In November, they were um, talking about um, making it actually an application within the BZA and not the um, Zoning Commission. And that as long as, and, and they had said that, um, that Richard had said in the minutes that he was going to do a BZA application for temporary use and um, give the authority to them as long as there was no structure added and um, one other condition, as long as it was no more than two consecutive days and then and as long as they provided for public safety and well-being and all that. And um, it's, it's not my place to question here that, but I wondered why the BZA would would cover, would take responsibility for public safety and things, the different. Anyway, um, well, I, that so me. is that, I mean, typically every, every temporary use has to go to BZA right now? I mean, that's not, is that, what's happening? I, I guess not. By default, it has. Usually, especially when it's like special events, and we've got different, um, we've got Cup Land Trust, which does, Harvest dinners and juke joint in the past. You've got um, pie for orchards that might want to do a special event. Library might want to do a special event. They have, they have to know far enough in advance to have it go to a BZA or. I'm not the zoning commission. Um, I think it just. I think the temporary uses because it's been talked about for a couple of years it really needs to be finalized. So I'm assuming that the zoning commission will bring that up the next meeting and we can dive into it and get. Get it done. So I am. Um, the things they said at the meeting when the what the trustees met with the zoning commission last meeting and they said they wanted to work on four things this year: personal solar, which is just rooftop type stuff, and that um, relatively non-controversial and already being done. We're kind of writing the writing the, the rules and rears. Um, temporary use. They want to get that out of the way, um, and then. Accessory dwellings because you brought it up and they they thought it was an important topic and then they said they would probably need the rest of the year to sort out the commercial solar piece of things so I'm trying to think what are they going to do next so I read the, the December minutes and they said that They said that next in February they will pick back up um, Personal solar rooftop. I'll call it rooftop solar which leads me to um, something I wanted to bring up, which is with <coughs> interest in a lot of these topics, how does 
How does the public know? How does the public know when, when each of these are going to be discussed? And so um, I had suggested that we urge the, urge the Zoning Commission to, to set, set the order for the year and then have some sort of public notification of what they'll be talking about the next meeting. Because I found out, they pretty much say at the end of the meeting, but then they don't approve the minutes for a month later, so the public can't even really read the minutes to find out what they're doing next time. Mm -hmm. So, I, when I read what they have ready going for temporary use, I know that there's going to be public interest in it. I know that there's public interest in commercial solar. I don't know how people are supposed to know which topic they talk about on any given night. And um, my colleagues have told me that we're not obligated to set an agenda, but I wonder how the public knows when they, which meetings they should attend. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if you have any suggestions or how it's usually done or how. I feel comfortable repeating our urge at their last meeting that they uh, make pu public their uh, expected agenda. Maybe we could offer to pay for the, let's, we'll have an ad. Well, how, how we've done before, we just, do the, do the meetings have to be advertised first of all and have they been? Yes. And they're, they're, public, they're published as Zoning Commission meeting and it's in the newspaper or are they just in the first, first of the year oh, first of meeting the year. schedule. That's the notification, time and place. So the, at the first of the year we tell where all the meetings are going to be? Well. I mean, all, not where are they all going to be, but when they're all going to be. Yeah. And, and that's reflected on our website. Well, it is, it is now. It is, it is now. It hadn't been until I... Well, just to clarify to folks here, um, or clarify my understanding, uh, there's a kind of cultural difference um, in that what is normally expected of zoning commission, because the zoning commission, although we appoint them, they're to be residents in unincorporated parts of the township. Uh, although there's some wiggle room, we cannot vote on uh, zoning code, quote, code changes unless they are sent to us from uh, the zoning commission. Until they are sent, sent to us, Not unless they're sent Okay, to until they're, well, we can't initiate a new topic without it coming from them. Uh, we and can, we can initiate it and then they can tell us whether they want to take it up or not. Okay, when I say initiate, I mean bring to our meeting without them going over the words. Uh, no, we can initiate text to them and ask them if they want to take it up. But we can't vote on it without it being right. something they sent us. Right. Now we can amend it. Right. Uh, well, I don't think agendas fall in that same category. Can you be talking about text amendments, maybe, or map amendments? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying agendas, function. but I'm, I'm trying to outline that there's this uh, autonomy and a degree of, we'll call it autonomous authority that they have. And it's, as I interpret the history of townships, it's giving an, an edge to people who don't live in the village of Yellow Springs, the village of Clifton, um, because it's zoning their land. Um, so what does that, that make sense? What does that have to do with the agenda? What? Um, well, that? that we have let them operate autonomously without demanding an agenda. We haven't let them, and we cannot demand. We can ask. We can ask, certainly. We can we urge. Can ask. Yeah. For the purpose of helping 
other people who live outside of the village and in the villages uh, to come to a meeting when the topic of interest is being discussed. But so I'm, I'm simply, well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm agreeing that it would be good to have yeah. uh, clear agendas. At the end of the meeting, they take a few minutes and we just set the agenda for the next meeting. It would be pretty easy to do. I mean, mm -hmm. there are really only a few topics that they're, they've been discussing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, mean, I, I could do that, or the, the zoning person could do that. Yeah, the they would have to, to and Chris, you're saying they would have to agree to that. Oh, yes. I mean, they could refuse to do it, but I, I don't think that they'll refuse. Well, I asked them to do it, but um, that we can ask again. Um, but I, I, do, I do want to take, just for the sake of, of discussion, they are autonomous. They can decide that they don't want to print, they don't want to set an agenda, they don't want to publish an agenda. But one, but one responsibility that we do have, Chris, is to provide a functioning, transparent board. I mean, we do, we do appoint them and we do remove them. So we do have some responsibility to, to make sure that we give a functioning board to the, to the public. We're not completely hands off to do whatever you like because you're autonomous. I mean, we have some responsibility. Sure, we can not reappoint one person per year if, you're, if we're not satisfied with that person's job performance. They have to be the one that comes, comes due that year. Is that true? Yeah. We can't, we can, I'm not, I don't want to remove any of them. <laughs> I'm just saying that, to say that we don't have any responsibility to have a well-functioning board that's transparent. Our responsibility is to appoint people that we feel will have that responsibility, and then if they do, they're off they go. Well, I don't want this, I don't want to imply that I'm disagreeing with uh, their positions on various things. It's that uh, zoning is becoming a a hot topic and there's more public interest and let's uh, make it accessible to the public. Uh, Bye. And we'll talk. I'll talk to Brian again. Okay. That's Brian Corey. Mm -hmm. uh, However, I do feel that we are within our right, Marilyn, to take information that they have, like uh, Denise was just saying, setting an agenda at the end of a meeting. Uh, Denise jots down three or four things, and she passes it on to you, and you put it on the website. Okay. That's, right. I find that to be perfectly within our scope, or in any other, any other mm -hmm. place. And I don't want to imply that I thought they didn't want the public to come and make comments. It's just that they have a kind of a, a brainstorm, open-ended style of running their meetings and the topics switch around. Um, well, I guess the agenda can kind of keep people focused better, mm -hmm. too. So, and you won't have <clears throat> people coming that expecting something and that's not yeah. being presented. So, yeah, I, I, that would be not a big deal at all, even putting it on the website. According to the November minutes, I would be surprised, or the, De wait, the December minutes, I would be surprised if we got talked about anything except for personal roof rooftop solar. Um, in what month is this? In February. Therefore, if somebody interested in commercial solar or somebody interested in the Tempius, um, they would sit through a long meeting and never hear anything on the topic. So, yeah, that's a good idea. And to repeat, you listed uh, in this, this last month's meeting uh, 
they said for the, this year they're focusing on personal solar, temporary use, uh, accessory dwellings, and commercial solar. Correct. That's what they have to get done this year. I hope they get to temp use soon, or we'll, or we'll be we'll be in springtime, and yeah, not have the regs yet. Uh, we also wanted to talk about the timeline for uh, finding a permanent zoning inspector. Appreciate, Denise, your, your service. Uh, any comments? I, I thought we somewhat agreed to start the process you know, in March for hopeful uh, uh, permanent position in April, first April. So we're saying post the job so at some point in, in like second week of March? Somewhere now. So we have I said said time. Yeah, yeah that's that's one. too soon? Um, no, I mean, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to get you a job description first. Yes. So I mean, I've got some samples of some. Okay. So when we feel like we're yeah. ready, post it and then accept Mm -hmm. Applications for or resumes for um, two weeks a month. Okay, we have had one inquiry, um, and we can. Uh, okay. But these are hard uh, deadlines. These are just the yeah, time okay. that we talked about. We like to, you know, All see right. what happens. Post it sometime in March. Hire sometime in April. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Well, we're not doing standing committee reports this this meeting. Um, new business. Where there's been discussion of changing the uh, comp time policy. I have that. Just a minute. Do you want to lead on this? Um, no. We're just going to add a paragraph to comp time um, for those employees that are eligible for comp compensatory time. Um, and that paragraph is the employee must claim, the employee must submit a claim of comp time to the chair of the Miami Board of Trustees by the end of the pay period in which the hours are accrued. This claim shall be shall include the number of extra hours worked and the necessitated reason for the extra hours worked. The chair will make a determination of approval and upon approval submit the hours to the fiscal officer. For the minutes, would you say specifically what the uh, article number is and the yeah. sub? I, I gave a copy to Cynthia. It's oh, okay. um, this was an amendment to Article Eight Point One. Of our of our personnel policy, mm -hmm. and thanks for sending that um, that digital copy to me, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, I, I took I started I I read it because <laughs> it was fun. Um, <laughs> well, I yeah, I, 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 Can I make um, a comment that? real quick on that. Just one comment is that <clears throat> with your flow chart, do you want an employee to come to you guys, or you want the employee to come to their supervisor, and the supervisor that's responsible for? They are coming to their supervisor. The only the only people eligible for comp time would be salaried employees. That in the past that was the fire chief and the assistant fire chief. Right now it's only the assistant oh, fire okay. chief. Oh, okay. So it's automatically you, go, automatically you guys anyway. Right. Okay. Okay. So, um, but I, I was going through the um, the policy manual and I found quite a few little. Um, things that need to be revised. So I think before we, maybe it's a good time before we hire a new fire chief to, I'll go through if anybody wants to help look at some things. Like for example, we did that DIA, um, Department of Labor, you know, thing last year and um, gave that 7K exemption to people. So, uh, but we still have, in our policies still reads, our overtime is over 40 hours. And now 
overtime is over 160 hours, 106 hours in two weeks. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of places that a lot of fix it. So sure. yeah. Well, we can do that. That's Sounds good. Along. Yeah. The way that specifically that was addressed was by resolution. But yeah. Yeah. The so it's there's like just little things. It'd be fun to update it. I'm glad to have a digital copy so I could. And anybody who would like to have input is welcome. Do you want to? We send you a copy and you can read it over. And I'm oh, yeah. yeah, I'm interested in uh, tagging along. And as you're going through it, I'd like to hear your in your comments. Sounds great. Any. Any discussion? I, I can't remember. Have we moved no, on we this? I, no? I'll move that we okay. adopt the amendment to 8.1. Second. Any other discussion of this? Okay. Nope. Yeah, I'd like to make a general comment. We're going through <laughs> some big changes with New, new chief of, uh, new fire chief, uh, and new fiscal officer, uh, and this is an organization that has, you know, what's been the average length of time a trustee has served? 20 some years over the last 40 or 50 years? Mm -hmm. uh, and long time uh, Colin was a longtime chief. Um, we're it's, we're combing through the hair, uh, and I really appreciate your initiatives. Yeah. Yes. Can uh, yes. <laughs> can we call the roll, please? We move consecutive to amend Article 8, Compensatory Time 8.1 of the Personnel Policy as read aloud. Um, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The motion is approved. Do we have to vote on these? Uh, these um, do we have to? Yeah, from our correspondence. Uh, I put on new business. Okay. Uh, 2023 Township Highway System Mileage Certification. Uh, this is pretty short. The total certified mileage at the end of calendar year 2022 for Miami Township and Green County was 14.487 miles. Uh, this is uh, from the Ohio Department of Transportation, and we're, as I understand this, we're asked to certify the accuracy of that. Uh, and this is required by Ohio Revised Code Section 4501.04. If we don't do that, then the county is not authorized to distribute funds to us from the state. By all means, Good point. <laughs> uh, but you've you've told me, not con contradicting that, but that it's the county engineer who decides which roads we're responsible for. Is that the process? Yes. So every so often, something's taken away from us, and something else is added somewhere else. Yes. And has that but been every, ever every 10 away. years? Nothing's ever taken away from us. <laughs> we get has that been, in your experience, every 10 years, every five years? Uh, when did we get Snip Road? Or, excuse me. Uh, I'm thinking Kyle. Uh, Kyle. When did we get Kyle? That, that would be the last. That's before me. Really? I think so. Well, it's been a while. It, it's not often. And we didn't lose any when, when the village uh, annexed that little Well, yeah, but the, the county didn't take it. Oh, well, part, of, yeah. part of Spillant Road, yeah. yeah. I entertain a motion 
Yeah, I move that we accept the... Um, that we certify. That we certify the, the mileage that we have 14.487 miles of county roads? Township. Township roads. A second. It's been moved and seconded to certify the 2023 highway, highway mileage count of 14.487 miles. Um, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is adopted. Is there other new business or old business that I'm forgetting? I can't think of any. Any last gasps from the public? I hear. <gasps> <laughs> Could you remind me of your, you, um, you came in after we first did interviews? Yeah, uh, I'm Alex Price, yeah. one of the owners of the Mills Park Hotel, and I'm the new chamber president for the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, that's Thanks right. for coming to our meeting. The Mark Heights is 24. So did, like, Mark used to have a business selling uh, ambulances, and so every so often he <laughs> give us special information. <laughs> I do not have that knowledge. <laughs> well, I move that we adjourn. Uh, I'll second. I'll just declare it adjourned at 6.04. Thank, thank you everyone for coming. Appreciate it.